Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to look into setting up the actual round logic of the game. We're going to see how far we get. Remember when I record these videos, nothing is really pre-planned. I kind of just go into it head first and see where we land. Alright, so first of all, let's think about what we want the round logic to actually be. So let me open up a notepad here and let's try and scribble something down. So of course the round logic should be somewhat sequential. So I think that should be a uh, player spawning phase. That should be a uh, sort of round running phase, of course. And then when everyone is dead, that's a round ended phase. And then of course, if we want, we can go from round ended back to player spawning. Or if the game should end, we can go to a game ending phase or something like that. I think this makes sense. You could of course also add like a buying phase back in here or something like that. But I think for now, let's keep it simple. And then you can always comment and let me know if you want something else. And I can of course try and include that as well. Cool, so keeping this in mind, let's go through it sequentially. So first of all, we actually don't want to use the default spawner of Pern anymore. Now we want to handle our own spawning logic. And it's actually pretty easy to spawn players. But let's go through it step by step. So first of all, let's set up our state machine. So this is going to be our, I'm just going to call it state machine. That's easy enough. And luckily with Pernet, we have a state machine already included. That's automatically networked and very easy to handle. And as you can see, it can also be owner auth. And we're going to be using that a bit later. But for now, we're essentially going to be handling our own states here. So let's think of the game states and let's go and create a new script. And this will be the player spawning phase. Or I guess state is probably the better word. And in the player spawning phase, we need a few things. So of course, first of all, let's serialize field and do a private um, network identity. Or I guess let's do a player health just to reference player directly. And this will be the player prefab. And also, in order to keep it a state machine, we gotta make the script inherit from state node, which is in perna.state machine. Now, we're gonna set a normal state node. As you noticed, there was two. There's one that also takes in a type, but that's not what we're gonna be using for the player spawning. We might utilize that a bit later, but for now, we're just gonna be using a normal state node. And now, what we can do with the state node is we can open up and inherit, or sorry, override the enter method. And you can also override the exit method. And there's a few other things. I, of course, have a video on using the state machine. And it's also written out in the docs. Cool. So what we know that we want to do is when we enter the state, we want to go through all the players in the game. And we want to spawn a player for each of them. Right. Cool. Um, let's just say that it's a free-for-all game right now. We're not really going to be worrying about teams. We just want to set things up so that, you know, they work. So let's do serialized field, private, and then we want a list of transforms as well because we want to be able to keep track of the spawn points. So this will be the spawn points, which is a new list. And great. Now let's try and iterate through it. So first of all, if we are not the server, so if we're not running this as server, we just want to return. Great. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to for each through every one of the players that are connected. And we can get those very easily in the network manager by doing network manager.players. And this is essentially a list of all the connected players, which is exactly what we want to use. So this is a player that we have over here as the variable in our for each loop. And now we essentially want to spawn. So I'm going to say new player equals to instantiate. And then we're going to instantiate the player prefab at some uh, spawn point, which is not going to be the player ID contrary to what this says. And let's also take the spawn point uh, rotation. So actually let's just do var spawn point, get it once, um, which is, we're gonna get to that in just a second. Doop, doop, like that. And then let's use this new spawn point here. So we do spawn point position, and we do spawn point dot rotation. There we go. Now, how we get the spawn point, I think we should be iterating up. So let's just make a new integer, which is the current spawn index. And we're going, of course, that's just going to default to zero. And then we're going to use the current spawn index. And we're, by the end of it, we're going to iterate the current spawn index up as well. Uh, now, another thing we also want to do is we immediately want to give this uh, new player ownership. So we can say give ownership and we can just feed it the player that we have right here. And that's essentially it. Now we are instantiating it and automatically spawning it. And also we are automatically giving ownership or immediately giving ownership to the player we are dragging through. So now every player should have ownership of one player object. Now, of course, there is with the current spawn index, we of course might want to go around. So, you know, we can just quickly do if the current spawn index is greater than or equals to the spawn points account, we just go back down to zero. So essentially it'll just loop. That's just a little safety mechanism. We should always make enough spawn points for every player anyway, but you know, can never be too safe. And then essentially when it's done this, we can just call machine.next because now we're done spawning. So we can go to the next phase. We could give them a bit of a warm up phase or something we want to, and maybe we add that later. But for now, this should work for the spawning. So now let's go in here, let's go into the network manager first and let's actually remove the player spawner that we have here. Now let's go into the state machine. I like making a game object for every state, you don't have to. 
uh, but I think it's clean keeping it separate like that. So I'm just making a game object, dragging the player in here. Uh, we, so we're gonna populate that with the player. We're gonna populate it with all the spawn points as well. I'm just gonna take all the spawn points, populate it like that, and there we go. So now as we have this, we can also add it now to the state machine like so. And if I now hit play, we will enter the state and essentially go next. Now the thing is obviously we don't have a next state yet. Um, so maybe if I comment this out, you should see that the spawning should still work just because I don't, when it goes next, it'll essentially loop back. I don't want it spawning infinite players. So be careful with that. And so as you can see here, when I hit start, we immediately get our player and I can move around and of course shoot. And now if my client joins, you'll notice that he didn't spawn, even though he has joined, he is in the session. Uh, and that's because the state has already ran. So obviously we've already entered the player spawning state. But what we can now do just to test that it actually works properly is we can manually just despawn the player from the scene here. And we can just hit next to go into the state again. And you'll notice now both players are here. And you know, of course you can shoot them and they can die. So everything now works as normal and now we're handling our own spawning. Now what we should probably do is have some kind of warm up state in the beginning, maybe before spawning and just waiting for X amount of players. Um, so I think let's just add that really quick. That's going to be very easy to do. So I'm going to hop back into my folders with game states. And I'm going to make a wait for players state. I'm going to make a new game object for it as well. That, add the script. And let's open it up and make it immediately into a state node. Cool. Now I can just serialize how many we want to wait for. So let's say we want to wait for a minimum of two players. And then in the enter state, we essentially now want to just wait till this amount of players is hit. The easiest way to do this is probably just with an eye enumerator. So we're just going to start a coroutine essentially. Wait for players like that. And then we're just going to do uh, essentially, I guess we can do we can do while network manager that players that count is less than minimum players. Then we will yield return null, which essentially means skip frame. So we're essentially waiting for as long as we can. And then we'll do machine.next once every player is in. Cool. So now let's just start the coroutine and we start the wait for players coroutine. And I think that should pretty much be it. So now we should be able to have both players join. Of course, we need to set it up in our state machine. So let's drag and drop it in there. So like this, whoops, that's the wrong state. Wait for player state. There we go. Make sure that it is the first state because that's obviously the one we want to wait for. And now if I hit play, you can see we don't immediately spawn. And now if our client joins and boom, there we go. Now we spawn and now both players are here right off the get go because we obviously waited successfully for all the players. Awesome. So now we've managed to go through two of the states here. And I guess let's make uh, one more state essentially waiting for there to be only one player left in the case of, you know, a free fall game mode. So I'm just going to make a new object immediately and I'll just call it the round running state. You can call it whatever you want to really, it doesn't matter that much, round running state. And let's drag and drop the script onto that and put it into the state machine immediately. So round running state and I'll add that. Oops, we need to of course make it a state node. And there we go, now we can add it in here. Cool, let's jump back into the code and let's set up the state. So essentially now when we enter the state, what we want to know is pretty much how many players are left alive. And there's multiple ways that we can handle this. I think one of the easiest ways will probably be to just keep track of the players that have been spawned. So one of the ways that we can do this, because obviously the server is the one that's handling the spawning. So if we go to the player spawning state and we now keep track of the players that we have spawned. So I'm going to do a private list and we'll do of player health. And this will be underscore spawned players equals to new. And actually, I don't even think we need to keep track of it here because we're spawning them in the enter. So we can actually just keep track of them in here. So I'm going to make a var called spawn players. And we're just going to make that into a new list of type player health like that. Cool. So now we have the spawn players. And essentially what we want to do is every time we spawn a player, we also want to add it to the list. So spawn players dot add new player. Cool. And then what we can do from here is when we enter the next state, we then just feed that state to this list of new players. So we can just feed it like this. And what we now need to do is we need to take our wait for players state. Oh, sorry, wrong state, the round running state. And we need to make it into a generic node that now expects the type of list of player health. So now we can get that in and now we can override the enter state. And instead of the one that just has the bool, we has the one that also has the piece of data. 
So now we know exactly what players are spawned. And I guess what we could essentially do is we could just keep keep an eye on this list. That would be one way of doing it. Another thing we could also do is we could have um, something on the players for when they die trigger. That's probably the cleaner way to go about it. So let's do that. Let's make a public action, which will be called uh, essentially, let's just call it on death. And let's do on death underscore server, just to, you know, so we know that it's called locally on the server. So in this case, we will just call it right before we destroy it. So on death server, there we go, we'll invoke. And I guess let's also just send the player health that has died. So we need to make this also generic with player health. Now goes, now we'll know which one dies. And this is important because going back to the round running state, we can now for each through each of our new players. So this will be a player. And we can say player dot on death underscore server. We'll do on player death like that. And let's also just do if we are not running as server, we just want to return because only the server should be doing this because only the server will be calling this regardless. Now we can make the method with the classic old enter. And here we have the, I guess let's just call it the dead player. We can really call it whatever we want here. Um, and first things first is you probably just want to unsubscribe from it just for good measure. It shouldn't really matter because the player isn't going to exist, so it's not really going to be called anyway. But for good measure, I like to always um, unsubscribe. And the next thing we can probably do immediately then is just remove it from uh, our incoming data. So what we can do is we can store. Let's actually just store how many is alive. I think that's easier. So just private int. We can do underscore players alive. And then when, when we enter, we'll set players alive equals to data dot count like that. That's essentially how many players we have. And then in here, we'll just do players minus minus, and then we'll do if players alive goes less than or equal to one, then we can go uh, to essentially, we could go to another state. We can do what we want. I guess for now, let's just debug out that somebody has won the round. Someone won the round like that. Cool. Let's go and test this. So I'll just start here and I will start on my client. There we go, they're both in now. Now let's try and have the let's try and have the server shoot this guy. So I'll just shoot him 10 times so he should die. And there we go, now you can see someone has won the round. Great, so we're already getting started very well with our round logic. And next time we can look into uh, also restarting the round logic. Uh, so that way we can you know, successfully have multiple rounds and whatnot going on. All we essentially have to do is despawn this player and then jump back to the spawning player state. And then we should have a pretty simple loop. Well, I really hope that this was helpful to you so far. And I hope you're learning something new every video. Uh, remember to join the Discord and write a comment if you have any questions or issues. Other than that, I just hope that you enjoyed the video, wanted to like and subscribe. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.